Boston is as American as it gets. It's the birthplace of the revolution and from its earliest days, a home for immigrants. But this isn't another story about the Irish or Italians. This story is about Syrians. A culture has survived the millennium. A lot of people don't know it. A lot of people have never had a book on what Arabs have given this world. Everything. As the civil war in Syria continues, many refugees have fled their homeland and come or attempted to come to the US. They've been otherized, discriminated against, called terrorists, and banned from coming to America. We don't want them here. But what you might not know about this immigrant group while watching the news is that Syrians have a long history of coming to the United States. I know this because I'm Syrian. My name is Omar and my parents immigrated from Syria to Boston in the 80s. So in telling the story of Syrians in America, I'm in a way telling my own story. And to do that, I have to go back home to Boston. It turns out that my hometown was historically one of the most popular places for Syrians to come to, starting in the 1890s. By the way, back then the term Syrian meant anyone coming from present day Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, and Jordan. Anyway, I wanted to hear about the old Syrian neighborhood in Boston, so I tracked down one of its last surviving residents, Olivia Wayshek. There were record shops, there were coffee houses, the, the old ladies like my grandmother, my tete, they would sit on the stoop and they would smoke the arele. It was a, a generation into itself. They brought all their traditions, all their customs, their food, their language. They brought everything here. Olivia's father immigrated from Syria in 1904 and her mother in 1912. She spent her childhood in this neighborhood known as Syrian Town or Little Syria, which was situated right next to Chinatown. The main, main area was Hudson Street. Then parallel to that was Tyler. Parallel to that was Harrison Avenue. Syrians came to Boston looking for work and later religious and political freedom. Because Boston was one of the nation's largest manufacturing centers, many Syrians, especially women, worked in the textile factories which were built along Harrison Avenue. There were a lot of factories that our people worked in as stitches. Now my mother as a young woman, she made samples. My father had a coffee shop. They would play cards and have Turkish coffee. And it was dislike, it was enjoyment for them. And that, once again, it kept everybody together. This neighborhood was the center of Syrian culture and community in New England. Back then, they had everything. They had olives, they had um, squash that was preserved and sent from, from Syria. They had grape leaves that were in brine, that were in big, big, big wooden barrels. Anything that you can imagine was imported because it wasn't made in this country. Olivia's family and the majority of Syrian immigrants during this time were Christian. But just 10 miles south of Syrian town in Quincy, Massachusetts, a small community of Syrian Muslims was thriving. I met up with Marilyn Johnson, who teaches about immigration at Boston College, to learn more. Many of them were shipyard workers who worked in the Four River uh, shipyards. And so you had a small um, Muslim shipbuilding Syrian community there. Marilyn told me about how adjusting to new life for these immigrants to the Boston area was not easy. For starters, not everyone wanted them. There were a lot of people who were not very happy about it. These were seen as illiterate, unskilled, undesirable immigrants. Then there was the question of whether or not they were white. You had to be white in order to become naturalized. So if you weren't considered white, then you weren't able to become a citizen and you could be banned. Syrians actually fought for years in the courts to claim that they were white in order to get citizenship. And in 1915, they won. In the words of the judge on the case, the generally received opinion is that the inhabitants of a portion of Asia, including Syria, are to be classed as white persons. Aside from Boston, New York and Detroit were also major centers of Syrian immigration. In these cities, you could find Arabic restaurants and grocery stores, import-export businesses, churches, Arabic language newspapers and magazines, and of course, street peddlers. Peddling was uh, a well-known occupation among, among Syrians, uh, both men and women, and often it was the occupation you might do when you first got here, even if you didn't know English that well. In 1924, the Immigration Act introduced strict quotas on immigrants, especially those from Southern and Eastern Europe, like Italians and Eastern European Jews. Between the 1920s and the 1960s, this is the restriction era, so very few Syrians entered the country uh, during those years. The quota was 
uh, probably 100 or under for the entire country. At the end of World War II, families started to move out of the crowded downtown Boston area and into the suburbs. For Syrians, this meant a mass migration out of Syrian town and into nearby West Roxbury. And then in the 1960s, what was left of Syrian town in Boston was almost entirely dismantled by an urban renewal project, the extension of the Mass Pike Freeway. I came home one day from school and there was a notice on the door that we had to vacate. We had no choice, so we had to move. It ruins our life. And there was no sum and substance to it. Olivia's home was demolished for a freeway. Down the street, a massive apartment building replaced the southern part of the neighborhood. What was once textile factories is now Tufts Medical Center, and only the original neighboring Chinatown remains. Any physical sign of what was once Syrian town in Boston is gone. But this is not to say that Syrians are gone. Whether you're Christian or Muslim, it's there. It's who we are. It's the thread of our fabric. It's the tapestry that made us who we are. Very kind, loving, caring, devoted, any kind of synonym you want to use, that is the Syrian people, no matter how you cut it. Syrians have been coming to the United States since the early 1870s for better opportunities, so we've been here a minute. We just heard from an early descendant of Syrians to the Boston area, and in the next video, we'll explore why my Syrian parents chose to leave Syria and how our Syrian family also became American.